Hello, this is EOM 309.06 Plan a Lesson. My name is CB Parker from 540 Golden Hawk Squadron, and this video will be covering teaching point number one. So the first thing we're going to touch on is the lesson objective. So by the end of this lesson, you should be expected to be able to research lesson content, and from this lesson content, plan a lesson plan. The second thing we're going to talk about is lesson importance. Why is it important that we learn this lesson and why is it important that we inquire these skills? So critical steps to a successful instruction period include researching content, preparing a lesson location prior to beginning the lesson, and planning a lesson plan. All of this provides structure that guides you as the instructor to ensure that you are delivering all the essential information to junior cadets. So the first teaching point is actually researching lesson content. So in order to plan a lesson plan, you must research content to become familiar with all the training standards, conditions, teaching points, lesson content, and timeline of the overall lesson. So the Canadian Forces employs its own acronym, which is CCSAM, which provides the framework for gathering and organizing reference material into an efficient lesson plan. So on the right hand side here, you can see that the acronym stands for Collect, Consider, Select, Arrange, and Master. So each step is divided into five steps for each of the five letters. The first one goes over collecting research material. So you collect all this research material that will be covered in the lesson using lesson specification documents such as the QSP, the instructional guide, and listed references. The second step is to consider all of the resources that you have acquired. So you're sorting through the collected content to determine if all this content is relevant to your lesson and it is current. The second, the third step, excuse me, is selecting the appropriate material and method of instruction for this lesson. The fourth step is arranging and organizing material into different stages that allows flow for the lesson plan. So it allows you to follow the timeline and it creates a logical sequence for learning. And the final step is mastering. So this is where you use all information from previous steps in order to write the lesson plan. Before we really go into depth, about the first teaching point, we're going to talk about the qualification standard and plan. So the QSP provides information regarding lesson specification and training objectives and the overall standards of the lesson. So on the right hand side here, you'll see an example of the content you can find in a QSP and then on the left is the cover page. So in the Google Classroom, you would have specifically received your own QSP initially addressed to you. This will be the lesson that you will be teaching for this training year. During this lesson, you will go through your QSP at the same time to locate all of the information in the next couple of slides so that we're doing the research content at so now we're going to go over the process of reading a qualification standard and plan. So we'll be answering the following questions regarding enabling objectives using the QSP example on the right hand side. However, on your own, use your QSP example to locate all this information. So the first question is, what will the cadet be expected to be able to do by the end of this lesson? So this can be found in the performance section of the lesson. So this will typically match the title almost every single time. However, there are a few exceptions, so make sure that you are double checking every single time. The second question is, under what conditions will the cadet be expected to be able to carry out the performance? So this will be under conditions, which is located under performance, as you can see here. So in this specific lesson, which is participate in organized recreational team sports, they will need equipment for both safety and sports purposes, supervision, any assistance as required, and then the environmental condition is that they need to find the appropriate sporting venue to be able to complete this, such as in a gymnasium, a field, etc., depending on what the sport is. The third question is, to what standard will the cadet be expected to be able to perform? So this is essentially the criteria of what the cadet needs to do in order to complete this lesson. So in standard, right here, you can see that for this specific lesson, they need to do four things, which are follow the rules and regulations of the sport that is outlined in the QSP and IG, participate in a warm up, participate in the given sport, and participate in a cool down. 
Moving on to talking about lesson specification now from enabling objectives. So the lesson specification provides information regarding content to be taught, teaching methods, time for teaching points, and references. So you'll see a table like this in your QSP. Make sure that you're highlighting important components such as the teaching points, the time lengths, and the methods. You can make note of the references, but for the most times, it will only reference exactly where the content is being pulled from if you need more information. Continuing on, you'll also find the overall time substantiation and references in your QSP. So the overall time will dictate how much time is spent on each part of the lesson. So it's an overall breakdown. So how much you're spending on conclusion and introduction, uh, the interactive lecture, practical activity, and so forth. Substantiation gives reason why teaching methods were chosen for a specific teaching point. And finally, references provides a list of sources that were used to compile the content. Finally, it will address training aids, learning aids, test details, and remarks. So training aids here outlined in blue are materials that are required by the instructor to instruct the lesson. So this will be any sports, safety equipment, appropriate for the activity, first aid kit, whistles, and a stopwatch. Learning aids that are materials that the cadet will be required to use to, in order to participate in the lesson, to enhance their learning. So in this example, sports equipment is what is necessary as a learning aid for the cadets. Test details will include information about the evaluation being conducted. In this particular lesson, there is no evaluation, but for one of your lessons, you may have an evaluation. And finally, remarks. So remarks describe any other information that might be useful to you as an instructor, or in fact, the training officer. So this example here is the CCO list of approved sports. This will be useful to you as an instructor because you can check which sports don't make the cut. But the following section here about recreational sports that can be carried out as nine periods during a supported day, that information would be more useful to the training officer. So now we're moving on to the next part. So we're going to take time to review exactly what an instructional guide is. So the IG provides instructors with the foundation to which deliver training. It will contain all of the content, any pre-lesson instructions, objectives, importance, anything like that. So instructional guides do not replace lesson plans, which is a very important factor here. They do not replace lesson plans. Instructional guides are divided into six informative sections. So as you can see here on the slide, there is preparation, introduction, body, conclusion, references, and annexes. For the most part, you'll only be using the main four, but there are times where you'll use five and six. So Preparation and introduction have been circled here in red just to give you an idea of where they should be located on your IG. So the first part, as previously mentioned, is preparation. The preparation section provides information regarding where to find lesson specification, so where to find information regarding your specific lesson in the QSP. It also provides any instructions for the instructors that they need to do prior to the lesson, so such as reviewing lesson content, photocopying any handouts from annexes, or pre-lesson assignments they need to give cadets prior to beginning this lesson. And finally, they'll find the approach and substantiation for why certain teaching methods were recommended for each teaching point. In the introduction, the, it provides information regarding necessary review, the performance objective, so what the cadet needs to do by the end of the lesson, and the lesson importance. Why is learning this content important and useful to the cadets? The body section is the largest part of the IG in the sense where it contains all of the content for the lesson. So it contains information regarding teaching points, lesson specifications, any teaching methods, note boxes, special instructions, anything like that would be in the content section of the body. The fourth part for the IG is the conclusion. So the conclusion states and provides any homework, reading, or practice that may be required after the lesson is finished for the cadet, the method of evaluation, a closing statement to be spoken aloud to the cadets by the instructor, and any additional instructor notes or remarks. The last two sections of the lesson plan are references and annexes. So the reference section lists any references used to create lesson specification and the instructional guide. So this will be where you find the original place of the content located in the instructional guide. 
The annexes is a location where you can find any pre-made training aids or learning aids for the cadets. So this would be any handouts or additional information for activities.